Hello there, felting friends. Welcome back um, to Chicken Run Creations. My name is Dawn, and um, by request, we are going to tackle making this little bat this morning. Um, so I've been, I am the type of person who needs to have something visually in front of me in order to make it. I have a hard time just kind of throwing stuff out there from my mind. So I've been playing around with some AI generated images and I had created this little guy here and I thought he was cute and thought that um, I would attempt to make something like it. So this is what I came up with. And um, there are some things that I would like to change. Um, I think his ears are a little too big, so I need to make those a little bit smaller. Um, this part of his wing is a little thick, so I'm going to try and make that a little bit smaller. I also um, didn't put a wire down the middle, which I think I'm going to do, which will help with making the, the shape of the um, wing here. Um, but this was the prototype, so we're going to see if we can recreate him in a video. I know I had um, one girl over in my needle felting tutorials and instructions group ask about how to do the ears. So we will show you how to do the ears. And we'll see if we can recreate this little guy to some extent. Um, <laughs> no two images are ever exactly alike, so I never know what they're going to come out like when I make them again. But yeah, um, I have a few others. That's why I have my paper folded here because I have a couple others on the sheet that I might make in the future. But yeah, I mean, I think AI has its his um, good points and its bad points. I won't get into a discussion there with that. But as far as using it to come up with ideas. I think it's a, a good tool to use. So let's see what we can come up with for making our little bat this morning. It's a dreary rainy day today so I can um, spend my time with you making this little guy. So let's um, move the camera and get all the materials that we're going to need together and we Okay, let's get started here, see what we need. So I decided to switch up the colors that I'm going to use for my little bat. Um, for the last one I did, I used this um, Corydale Silver Scarlet from Cupid Falls Farms. And um, it's not, it's, if you can see, it's not a, a black black because I wanted the black details to show up. And I just ordered this from Lion Gate Farms, and I do not have the color handy, but I will try and remember to post what color that is. And um, I had made a stitch character for a friend of mine's daughter, and I used this color on it, and I have a lot of it. Um, so I thought maybe I'll make this next bat using this color. Um, it's kind of a blue silver kind of color. It's really pretty. So we're going to use that. Um, but you can use whatever you have hanging around. You could use a gray, you could use a black, you could use a brown, you could use a, pretty much anything. Um, we need some white for his belly and his eyes, some black for his nose, his eyes, some details and stuff. Um, a little bit of yellow for his eyes. You could use whatever you want for his eye color to be. I like this this yellow color. Um, finger guards come in handy. Scissors. Um, I like to use the um, disappearing ink um, marker for marking where his eyes are going to go. Um, 
This tool comes in handy along with my um, brush here, which needs a cleaning, um, to do the ears, but not necessary. You can definitely do it without them, but there's five needles in there. So I like this. Hand. This is a very handy tool for doing um, flat pieces. So we'll probably use that, but again, not totally necessary. Um, you're going to need some core wool, which I forgot to pull out here, but I have a whole big thing of it if I can find the end of it. So you'll need some... Now you don't necessarily need core wool. You can definitely um, probably do this without the core. I'm going to have to figure out where the end of that is. Um, so you could definitely make it using your your color total, but I kind of like to use the core wool. It kind of saves on your color, which costs a little bit more. So I have a multi-tool here with some spiral, 38 spiral needles in them. Maybe they're 40. Yeah, I guess they're 40. Um, I may or may not use this. It comes in handy, but I'll have it on hand in case I do. And then let me see, what do I have here? I have a 38 triangle, I believe. Um, yes. Um, this one is a 36 triangle, I think. Let me see. Yeah, something like that. And then I have my 42 triangle. So those are the three needles that I will probably be alternating with. Um, I almost think this is, it says 36, but anyway, I don't know. We'll just use what feels right. That's the way I do it. So, all right, let me take a minute here and get my core wool pulled out so I can find the end of it. And we will get started with our little bat. Okay, I got my core wool out. This is a Corydale sliver from Cupid Falls Farms that I'm using. Um... I like this for doing little things because I can kind of control the size a little bit better than the really big flat bats. Um, I just kind of like working with this a little bit better for doing little projects like this. So we are going to get started. Um, I'm just going to I don't know, pull off a hunk of this here and we're going to start with the head and I think I'm going to Pull that in half because I don't want this head to get too big. I'm going to use this picture as a reference because he's pretty close to that size. I did pretty good this time around. So we're going to see how we can do here. So to start, we just need to make a ball. So I am wrapping, just kind of rounding this as tight as I can. And I'm just going to kind of stab it in place here a little bit. We're going to have to add to it. I've been, sorry, it's been two weeks since I've put a video out. Um, we were actually not supposed to be here this weekend. Uh, we had plans to go see my grandchildren and their parents this weekend. However due to a death in my husband's boss's family. Uh, we weren't able to go because he has to work while his boss is at the funeral. So we postponed that trip. We will be doing that later. Have to go celebrate my grandson's first birthday. So uh, let's see here. Yeah, we definitely need some more. So I'm gonna take that other half of that piece that I had there. I'm not sure if we'll use all of it, but we'll get it going here and see what we get. I'm going to make it too big, a little bit bigger than the picture, so it will felt down. That might work. So, anyway, so I did not expect to be able to get a video out um, this week. Plus, I didn't really know what to make. I had been felting a lot for the shows that I did. And that was taking up quite a bit of my time, and I really had no idea 
what I wanted to do a video on. Um, I had a suggestion for a chicken and I had been kind of looking at some different pictures and there's a number of chicken videos out there. I may still do one. I just have to kind of decide how I want to make it so it's different from everybody else's chicken video. <laughs> And I had made this little bat. I was thinking Halloween and the things that people like for Halloween. And I put got the got the prototype finished and had planned on doing a video, but I didn't think I would get to it until next week because I didn't expect to be home this weekend. But since it's we're home and it's very rainy outside and I can't work in the garden, which I've been trying to get my garlic planted and get it cleaned out. And this last week I spent quite a bit of time out there doing that because it was nice. I figured today I will try and make this little guy. So I'm just comparing him to the picture here. I think it's a pretty good size. I don't think I'll need to add any more to it. So we're just going to kind of felt this down a little bit. I want to get it fairly firm. Again, um, if you're new to felting, um, you want to, when you're making a round shape like we're doing here, you want to keep, keep it moving uh, so it stays round. You can also kind of roll it in your hand a little bit. It'll help with the felting process. I'm going to go down to a smaller needle here and work on firming this up a bit and I am going to once I get it firm I'm going to mark where we are going to put the eyes and I'll probably put his muzzle on first so when I first made my little bat I didn't really give it a muzzle because if you look at the picture here I mean, you can't really see a muzzle, um, obviously, because it's just a 2D picture. And I made it without a muzzle. And I just didn't like the way it looks. So I went in and added a muzzle. And it's a, not a very big muzzle. Um, if you can maybe see from the side here, I might make it a little bit bigger on this one. I mean, it looks okay. But we might go a slightly larger Um if you look at a picture of a real bat, um, it's kind of got a mouse type face, so the, a mouse has a muzzle. So um, we might add a slightly larger muzzle to this one and see how it looks. It's the one thing I really like about felting is, you know, there is no right or wrong. I mean, obviously, if you're trying to do a realistic animal, um, you obviously want to go realistic, but when you're doing like little characters like this, there's no right or wrong. It's pretty much all in the eyes of the um, creator, how it comes out. So, and I like to use the pictures as guidelines, but it doesn't have to look exactly like it. So... I have switched down to my 42 triangle here. I haven't had the 42 triangle for a whole long time, but I really, I really like how it smooths things out. If you're having problems getting your projects nice and smooth, try a 42 triangle or even a spiral. I don't have a 42 spiral. I have a 40 spiral. Um, but this tends to really get stuff nice and smooth, depending on your wall. Some walls, it's just really hard to get very smooth, but this one works pretty well.
Okay, it's pretty good. Still has a little bit of a squish to it, but that's okay. I'm going to add the top coat and it will get even more squishy there. So, all right, let's try and do the muzzle, I think. So I'm going to do the muzzle with my top coat. And if I do the muzzle first, then I can line up the eyes with it. So I'm just going to take a little bit here and I'm just, this might not, this might be too much. Let me see. Yeah, I think that might be too much. So we're going to maybe take half of that. And I'm just going to kind of roll it up here. Give it a few stabs. I'm going to fold it in half and kind of work it a little bit here ouch <laughs> good time to have a, a guard on i think see i still stab myself let's put at least the guard on my thumb here yeah i'll do the finger too so I can hold it a little bit better. So I was in my group, I was watching a video somebody had posted and they were using, um, oh, that diamond painting. She was using one of the tools from that to hold her wool down while she stabbed it to keep from getting her fingers. And I thought that was a pretty clever idea. Usually I'm pretty good about not stabbing myself, but once in a while I get going a little too fast. All right, just enough to kind of hold it together. Now let's see where do I want to put it. So I want it kind of low. So if you see the picture here, it's got a really big forehead and it's almost, yeah, it's pretty round, but the muscle's pretty low. So I'm going to kind of put it low here and just kind of stab it in. I, I left that, those bottom pieces fluffy so I can stab them in. It might be a little big, but we'll build up around it too. Add some cheeks and stuff as we're coloring it in. I might have to go a little bit bigger just to have room for his nose and mouth, but we'll see as we work it here. You can always add, I mean, you can take away too, but you can always add to your project if it's not working for you. Okay, definitely bigger than that one, but that's okay. All right, let's figure out, let's see here. I think I might. Not sure why I took that since I have this here. Yeah, let's make his eyes first. Whoa! I just threw my cover on the floor. All right. So he's got really big eyes. So I'm just gonna kind of. Try and sketch a circle here. Now you could um, like draw some circles 
on a piece of paper and pin them on and trace around them so they're the same size. That might work. Okay. So I'm just going to kind of poke around where those eyes are going to be a little bit. I do want them fairly on, in the front. I don't want them like going around the back, if you know what I mean. So I do want them kind of flat here in the front. So you can see on this one how they're they're very much facing the front. This one's a little bit smaller. All right, so we're going to get our yellow here and fill in those circles with the yellow. And this is just, um, I'm just kind of marking with this at the moment. We're not going to fill in any of the detail yet. Just want to know where my eyes are going to be. So I'm not too worried about it being totally filled in because I'll probably add more yellow to it before we add the rest of the details. All right, so his eyes are a little bit more oval than what I have here, but like I said, we can we can adjust that as we're as we're working it. Um, I definitely want to keep a high forehead, so I might have to add a little bit to that. But all right, move the yellow out of the way. So now I'm gonna start to cover his head. I'm going to build up this section here of his nose a little bit. So I'm going to take some of my top coat and I'm just going to flatten it or stab it a little bit here just to kind of hold it together. I feel like I'm working off to the side here. I'm kind of leaving the ends fluffy so I can attach them. All right, so I'm going to put this right down the middle here. And I'm going to try and stab it in around those eyes. Spread it out a little bit.
looks like a duck. He looks like a duck and quacks like a duck. It must be a duck, right? <laughs> Let's hope not. Let's hope we can make him into a, a bat. So I'm just kind of going to take some pieces here and if I want to do that, build up underneath the eyes a little bit. Let's see. Every time I make one of these, I do it a different way. So I, I never know what I'm going to end up with. I guess because I make so many different things, I don't have a process worked out in my mind to do the same thing every time. And I'm probably doing it all wrong. So, you know, if you are an experienced felter and you do it a different way, then by all means, do it your way. Every time I watch a new video, I learn something new. But then when the time comes to actually use those skills, I forget about it. So, unless I'm actually following along with somebody. So if you um, are new to my channel, if you would just take a minute and click that subscribe button if you like what you're seeing and 
drop me a comment down below and let me know what you think of my videos. I greatly appreciate it. Sometimes I don't know whether, you know, people are enjoying my videos or not. Um, my little ghost video that I put out last month has done really well. I'm quite surprised at how good it has done. And I've seen a couple a couple people who have made it and made the little ghost and they've turned out really well. So um, I like feedback, you know, it's always good to know whether people are interested in your videos or not. So please let me know with a like and a subscribe and a comment. Let me know what you think. Let me know what you'd like to see more of. So I can figure what direction to go with my channel. I have a couple other things that I'm working on. Um, that I might do videos of in the near future. Coming into the holidays, I'm trying to think. I did the snowman one already, but I'm trying to think what other videos maybe would be fun for the holidays. So if you got any suggestions, let me know. Okay. Not too bad. All right, I'm going to um, add some more yellow here to his eyes. Now that I kind of have the shape that I want and the body color on it, just going to build them up a little bit. So you could do the ears next, however, I did that with the other one. However, it does make it hard to um, work with for the rest of the body. So I'm going to wait on the ears until I get his body done, especially came in. I had difficulties like when I was trying to get his feet on with the ears on. So I'm going to wait until after I get the feet on to do the ears. I think they're a little more rounded than oval, but that's all right. It's going to kind of squish them with my fingers a little bit here. All right. Let's make the pupils. So I'm just going to could take my marker here and just kind of outline where I want the black to go and my pen
picture. They're both kind of looking to the center. Okay, I happen to think um, if you're wanting to know what size our little head is here, uh, looks to be about an inch and a half. Yeah, just about an inch and a half. So if you're making long, um, I will try and remember to maybe. Um, See if I can do a PDF of the picture of the little bat so you can have it to gauge the size if you want to make one. I'm trying to remember to do that. And I put the video up. Okay, not too bad. Size a little closer over here, but we're going to go with a, a black around the outside of the eye. Might need to touch the eye up a little bit after we with that. We'll see how it goes. So I'm just going to roll a thin piece of black in my fingers here. And we're just going to put it right around the outside of the eye. I'm just kind of holding on to the end of the little strand that I have here and just gently poking it in all the way around the edge of that yellow. And then I'll go back around and get it in there really good. I'm just tacking it in place at the moment.
So what are you working on for Christmas? Are you making any projects for Christmas? I just asked my daughter to let me know what her, my grandchildren are, what kind of characters they're into these days. I know they're have like Pokemon favorites. Let me see what I, I always like to make at least one homemade gift for all my family members. So I'm trying to figure out what I'm going to make them this year. I'm just going to cut this extra off. more black to the top of this one. This is looking a little bit more orange on that side. Sometimes it's very difficult to get the eyes looking exactly in the same direction. <laughs> yeah, they're off a little bit. Let's see here if we can adjust that a little bit. Yeah, not too bad. Not the best, but it'll work. All right, and now I'm just going to take a little bit of white and make some dots for the eyes. Just take a little bit of white, roll it in your fingers, get a nice little ball there. And... One dot is on this side. And the other one is over this way. I feel like this eye needs to come down a little bit. Let's see if I had some black here.
So I wanted to share. I went to a um, huge craft show a couple weekends ago with my husband. And there was only one needle filter there. And she mostly did paintings. She did have some 3D objects there, but most of her work was um, a painting. And she actually took um, first prize at the show for her booth, which I thought was really kind of cool. I'm still not happy with that eye shape. I'm going to have to come back to that, I think. Sometimes when they just don't work, you need to put them aside and come back to them. Let's try this. She had a lot of inventory, way more than I did at my shows. I have to like spend all winter building up inventory. And I'm still not very happy with those eyes. This one's a little wonky here. I'm not quite sure what I want to do to fix it. All right, we're just going to let it go for the moment. It will do something to fix it. Okay, anyway, let's give him a nose. And I'm just doing a little, just a little ball here on the top of his snout. Kind of giving it an oval shape. I'm going to go into a whole lot of detail on it. And then for a mouth, I didn't pull it out. I have just this little bit of um, salmon color. I don't even know if this is what I used on the other one, but it's sitting here. So um, I just... I just kind of threw it up there. You can um, obviously put more time into what this mouth looks like if you want to add detail, like a little line going down from the nose to the mouth, you could do that. Or outline the mouth. Okay. I gotta figure out that eye. It's gonna bug me. It's definitely not working for me. <laughs> 